Today we have Jermaine Taylor, UCF all-time leading scorer. The man scored over 1,900 points for this university before his tenure in the NBA. Played with multiple teams in the NBA, played internationally. And I'm telling you, this man is going to give you a lot of insight, especially if you are a leader in business, an athlete, and of course, a leader in sport. You're gonna learn a lot about resilience because he has an incredible story. You're gonna learn about transition because all of us go through periods of life where what we thought was forever is it. And you're gonna know when you hear him what his sincere secret sauce was to keep him sane and head him toward the directions of success. This is a show you'll wanna watch because it's going to be deeply heartfelt and it's going to be encouraging. So tune in, coming up next. Welcome back to Aspire Hire with Charles and Ivana Bailey. We have one of the all-time greats in Division I basketball. I'm not joking. We got Jermaine Taylor, Taylor. in the studio. <laughs> Let me tell you a little about this man, Talk Washington. Uh -huh. This man played with the Wizards. Yes, he, did. he played with the Rockets. Uh -huh. He's played international. Yep. And in fact, he's still international. This man is a philanthropist. Yeah. The coolest thing is he was just recognized and put in the Hall of Fame for UCF. That's Woo! Central Florida. <laughs> And this man literally scored points yeah. almost to the Max. equivalence. No, but what? Almost to the equivalence of the year we're in. It scored, this dude scored over 1,900 yeah, points. It was the most in their <laughs> Division I like, existence. Yes. So this is the all-time leading score for UCF. Yep. Man, Jermaine Taylor, welcome <laughs> to the show, bro. Uh, I appreciate Glad you having have me. You, man. No, thank you. Uh, How does it make you feel, man, when someone tells you about yourself? Uh, I'm be honest with you. I don't really know how to take compliments too good, but I do appreciate it. Though, man. That's all right, really man. Good. We're honored to be in your presence today, bro. Well, well of you. course, you met my wife. You met me. We're just really excited to talk about you, though. Mm -hmm. So this is all about your story, your yeah. journey, yeah. and we can jump right into Let's it, babe. But I'm going to let go you start because I know it. you've done some research. <laughs> go ahead. I have done some research. This guy is so acclaimed in life, <laughs> but his spirituality is yeah. what drew me even deeper. Yeah. Why don't you talk about how your platform platform spiritually is bigger than your athletic platform? Uh, I mean, spirituality is just a part of my life. Um, I was even telling this story not too long ago. So growing up, uh, you know, I grew up without a father, just okay, my yeah. three sisters and, yeah. you know, my mom. And I really didn't have anybody to talk to. You right. know, I was I was struggling. I was, uh, yeah. I, things I didn't understand. And I just remember one day just dropping to my knees and asking God to send me somewhere. Wow. Like, send me somewhere because I don't want to be here anymore. And then the next day, I walked into my fourth grade class, and one of my best friends to this day walked up to me and said, hey, you're tall. You want to play basketball? And I was like, yep. <laughs> so uh, his dad picked us up from school, went to my mom's house. I signed a page to play AAU, and I've literally been playing ever since. So I looked at that as that was God's way oh, yeah. of giving me yes. something to save my yes. life because, you know, basketball, is, I've never done anything else. I've literally been playing since fourth grade wow. till now. What a career. Yeah, yeah of so, course. Yeah, it's so. unreal wow. to find something you love so early. Oh, my goodness. Did I'm you feel like that. the sport picked you, or was it really your determination to choose the sport? Well, my dad was also, uh, I mean, my dad was in my life, but he was a basketball player. Okay, yeah. And then my whole family, like, they played. Got it. Um, so I've always played, but it was just, that's when I started playing organized basketball. Mm -hmm. That's when I started playing AAU. I was traveling. I was, you know, playing on courts instead of in the concrete. That's right. Mm -hmm. So... Everything just changed then. I started learning different things, going different places. So that's why I say God really used it to save my life because I don't know where I'll be without basketball. Wow. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Very, statement. yeah, very deep that's statement, huge. man. So tell us a little bit about what you do currently because I know that people are watching. So we want mm -hmm. them to know where you are today and then we'll unpack it as we go. So okay. what do you do right now? So I work with this company called uh, Sports World mm -hmm. and we take uh, former professional athletes and we put them in the schools all around the country. It's a faith-based organization, so we, we share our stories, and we just really encourage these kids. And we have these things called uh, comment cards. So uh, the kids write down, they just tell us things, you know, that they normally wouldn't tell people. We've had uh, kids tell us that they've been cutting themselves. We've had kids tell us that they've come up with uh, plans to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just get them help right away. We're real involved in the, these communities. Mm -hmm. And like I say, we just get them help and just show them that somebody uh, cares for them. 
So, yeah, and I feel like that's my purpose. I feel like that's what I was put here for. A lot of things that I've gone through was for that, because I see now as I'm speaking, a lot of things that I have gone through, these kids are going through too. And when they hear me say it, I can see right away that they, they relate to it. So, Absolutely. Yeah, and that's your credibility, you yeah. know? How did you navigate that space? Like, it found you, or did you always know you wanted to work with kids and empower them and uplift them? It found me. That's wow. literally like everything in my life. So even uh, I can think back years ago, I was playing in uh, New Zealand, and three times a week we had to go into schools and talk to kids and you know play with the kids and things like this. And then I've always just found myself, I'll be in the gym, and someone will come up there and be like, hey, we're having camp downstairs, you mind come talk to the kids? Uh -huh. So I've literally been doing it for like 12 years. And then uh, I was playing in the big three uh, a few years ago, and I ended up getting hurt. I tore my Achilles. Oh, man. You know, oh, I, th I think this, I know, right? And it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's yeah. ironic Achilles because story, no joke. Yeah. it's happening so frequently, but I have yeah. a story with that too. I tore my Achilles, man, my first year as a professional track athlete. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have a career because it was my first meet. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Crazy. And yeah. it was yeah. a full tear? Yep. Oh, oh, it was pretty no. much like that. So I, I played in the big three in my first season. I did like real good. I averaged 11 points in yeah. 11 minutes. So that next That's season. Incredible. That is really yeah. good. Yeah. 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 What's this guy with numbers in, at, in five, years? Buddy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you give me that's a minute, oh, yeah. I'm going to score a point. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really one my minute, career. One point. Bump, bump. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah, so going into that next season, everybody was excited. They thought yes. that, okay, yeah, he's about to make a name for okay. himself and everything like this. So I go out to that first game, two minutes into the first game of the season. Your first game also. I'll tear, tear my Achilles, yep. And then uh, once I tore my Achilles, I was one of the first players who uh, wasn't on contract. So went from supposed to be getting like 80000 to mm, that's it. nothing. You yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah, just yeah, the just workers' like count, that. which was really, really nothing. Yeah, so it really put me in a, a, a bad spot. I ended up uh, having to move out of my uh, place, had to move in with my mom. Um, couldn't really uh, – my car was paid for, but just you get a flat tire, like $400, yeah, for yeah, like, you know, Audi or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I ended up having to get a new car and just sleeping on couches, moving yeah. around for – and this happened for, for a while. Um, and then, you know, COVID happened too. Like, yeah. so all this was like back to back. So then I just got to a point to where I didn't know what I was going to do. I was lost. Like, I really just – I was – I didn't know. And then uh, I get a call from this company I'm working with now, Sports World. And it's like, we want to fly you out to uh, Indiana just to shadow another speaker to see if it's something that uh, that you would like doing. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. So they flew me out, and I wasn't even supposed to be speaking. I was just sitting there listening to the other speakers speak, right. but all the kids kept looking at me. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I wasn't dressed up. You know, I had right, right. same kind of clothes they wear, had my hair down, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they just really just want to know who I was. So uh, the guy gave me the mark, I ain't no speaking. And I'm speaking, and I just see this kid, his eyes start to get, you know, a little watery. So I'm like, you, you okay, bro? He goes, man, your your story kind of reminds me of my life. He was like, my mom didn't want me, my dad didn't want me, but every time I would step on the court, it would feel like therapy, mm -hmm. like everything would go out the window, because that's what I was saying, that's how my life was. Right, right. And right then and there, I knew that this is why I was here. This is wow. what God put in front of me, and then I just took off from there and been doing it ever since. You know what's interesting? You didn't have your father in the capacity where he could show up for you, mm -hmm. but you did have heavenly father yeah, to continue to guide you provide for you like you were given these opportunities so you couldn't fail there was no way and every time he pivoted your life you were able to come onto the scene but also bring others up with you mm -hmm. that is so encouraging you know it's interesting too that for everyone we've spoken to and i remember i had a friend that used to say this said i feel like when it comes to faith there's always this horror story mm -hmm. associated with walking it out mm -hmm. and and i didn't take it that way but i look at it as true i look at it as testing we write about in our book the flight of your life that mm -hmm. your purpose will test you oh yeah if you really say you want to have higher aspirations you really say you want to live and make an impact mm -hmm. whatever those things are they're going to make sure that they don't take you the easy route mm -hmm. yeah. they're going to take you and here's what's crazy the shortest way possible mm -hmm. which usually is the most painful way Absolutely. Yep. Can you talk about some of those periods? Because you talked about not just, you know, the contract as it was expiring and mm -hmm. having it hurt. Mm -hmm. But I remember you saying something about staying with your mom. And I remember, you know, but there was a situation, though, where you had to move out, right? Or something like that happened. Yeah, I had a, uh, my sister. Uh, she has two kids, my younger sister. Well, I have okay. three sisters. But uh, one of my sisters, uh, she had to move in. She had an apartment. I was getting ready. Um, so while I was getting ready, she didn't have anywhere to stay. So I was like, yeah, you she stayed at my mom's, and yeah, I'll find somewhere to go. I have, that's what I told my mom, I have somewhere to go. But I really didn't. I just, uh, 
I would rather my sister stay there. You got two kids, you know, these are my nephews right. and nieces, you know what I mean? So you were looking out. Yeah, that's just Yeah. Well well, did that lead to you international? So how long did it take you to heal? But did you move from healing and then start it right back into ball? Oh no, this was all of this was after international. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um I actually had two injuries. I had another injury uh in two thousand thirteen. Okay. And that's when I tore my ACL and my meniscus. I don't know if Jeez, I talked to you no, about that. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's actually even the story that I uh, speak to when I'm speaking uh, to the kids. Okay. That's like a big part of it. Um, because at the time I was the best that I've ever been. I was yeah. uh, I was with Cleveland. Uh, I had a great summer league. I averaged 13 points in only 15 minutes in summer league. league. Yep. Uh, and then um, I went to preseason and I had a great preseason. And then they had to cut me. So once I got cut, they called me the officer. Look, man, don't go overseas. They're like, we wanted to keep you, but we just things didn't work out in time. Mm-hmm. So it's like, go overseas. I right, go to the D League. Mm-hmm. Somebody's gonna call you up if not us, because we tried to buy your rights from the yeah. Boston Celtics. Yeah. It was like uh, the fact that they wouldn't give us your rights that lets us know that they, they maybe could call they you up. Want you, yeah. So I was like, cool. So I go down to the D League. Even the coach told us he was like, you guys don't even have to practice because we've been told that our our starting five won't be here longer than a week. Mm-hmm. So I go out the first game. I think I scored 29 the first game. Then I go out the second game, have a great first half, come back in the second half, first play of the second half. I go down, I tear my uh, ACL and my meniscus. And But the craziest thing is I remember sitting in the hospital and I got my leg up and I'm just flipping through the channels and the Boston Celtics are playing. Mm-hmm. They called up on the guard who played my same position and he was wearing my number. Oh and no, I knew, I knew, what? I knew that that was supposed to be me uh, just because the Celtics paid for everything. They paid for all my my surgery, to fly oh, me home, to no, fly me back. So they're not doing it, yeah. that. Yeah, they're not doing that if if you know it wasn't for me. So but I believe everything has its reasons. It does. You know, so many things happen in my life. I don't look at things as good and bad. I look okay. at it, this is what it is. Okay. This is God allowed this to happen because it's turning me into who I'm supposed to be. Come on now. And that's literally how I have to look at things because so many things have just happened. Yeah. And then once I look back on it, I see that it was necessary. Because mm-hmm. I even know how I was thinking at the time. The wisdom that I have now, I didn't have. So had I not gotten hurt and was in the NBA, mm-hmm. I could have run my life in a whole different way just because, mm-hmm. like I said, I didn't have a father. And I could have easily have gotten uh, sucked into that lifestyle and, and, you know, just went down the wrong path. So I look at it as not bad. It's just what was necessary what was for me necessary. to become who I needed to be. Wow. Mm-hmm. How did you find resilience within you? Because somebody would take those situations yes. and be very disappointed and mm-hmm. start resenting the league, resenting the contracts, resenting all these things, right? Anyone associated. Anyone associated because mm-hmm. athletics is so black and white. It's mm-hmm. very black and white. But with that, how did you find the strength to bounce back every time mm-hmm. after injury, after God, surgery? Mm-hmm. God is literally the only reason that I could, I could do it. Mm-hmm. Like There's no other thing that I can think of that's happened in my life besides just God being there right. that helped me get through everything. Wow. Because it's just been so many, so many crazy situations, like sure. back to back to back to back to back. <laughs> yeah, and then now that I'm looking at my life, like I say, I just see how necessary it was. Yeah. So that's literally that, that's, I can only give credit to God. That's, that's it. awesome, man. That's it. And did you audibly hear him? Like what was your experience as you were going through? It was mostly just, really just knowing that everything has its reasons. Got like, cause when I look back on my life, there's so many things that at the time it happened, I didn't understand it. Of course, but looking of back course. on it Come years on. later, I can easily see like, oh, this is why that happened. Mm. You know, cause I'm always searching for God. I'm always looking for God. And, mm. wow. and that's how I was able to see it. Just, it was clear. yeah, just, yeah. Jeez. Just looking back on my life. Like I am literally a walking testimony. Yes, so right. I can go yes. back and look into my life and just see that all these, uh, situation that God has showed himself yeah, and right. that alone gives me the strength to just to keep going. I love that. Mm-hmm. And was it hard to transition out of the identity as the NBA player, yeah. as an athlete? Like talk about that. I think that's probably the hardest part. Always. Because I didn't know I could do anything else. Like yeah. I said, I've been yeah. playing since mm-hmm. I was in fourth grade. So I, and then the, one of the hardest parts is the people, like dealing yeah. with other people. That's all they know about you. Like even now, yes. like, mm-hmm. It's hard for people to even have a conversation without bringing up basketball. basketball. Of you know what I mean? Of like, and, and I don't even look at basketball the same. I see it now as it was just a stepping stone That's to get it. me okay. to what I'm doing now. Because right. these kids, like when you say NBA, this that opens eyes. But yeah. then when I start to speak about what I'm speaking about, that grabs them too. Mm. So 
Like I said, yeah, I just see it for what it is now. That's it. When mm-hmm. you when you look at basketball in that context, and as a former basketball athlete, would you, having looking back on the wisdom that you have, would you feel better if people didn't just see you as a basketball athlete? And are you actively trying your best to redefine yourself, or is it that you feel like basketball will always be a part of me, and that's a, that's okay if they see that as part of my identity? Yeah, um, I feel that way. I feel like it is a part of me. And like I say, I don't – like basketball has been real good to me. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I know God brought it in my life to save me, I'm going to always love basketball the way I do. You know, it's just it's just not – I just don't want that to be – what people think that's that's right. it. That's all that's that all you all can do and yeah. all that you are, right? You have higher aspirations. Right. So talk about that because I think that would be a great segue into what we wanted to ask you. So we've talked about the injuries. We've talked about some of the things that you've walked through. But let's mm-hmm. talk about the other side of that, right? So you transitioned into international speaking. Mm-hmm. You're helping kids to find their path. Right. What are some things that you've learned that you're actually giving them? What are some mm-hmm. of the things that you really want to tool them with? Let's say that there's an athlete watching right now mm-hmm. and they're like, okay, I got so much of his story, but what can I get from him? What mm. what what would you say to that person? Um, I would definitely say just to to not put yourself in a box and don't let other people put you in the box. Mm. Yeah, you're an athlete, but you are so much more than just an athlete. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I play ball, but what I'm doing now fulfills me way more yeah. than the basketball ever could. That's right. You know that's what right. I mean? And, and that's what I don't want a lot of these players to get caught up in because mm-hmm. people will just automatically just put you in that box. You're a basketball right. player, go be a basketball player. Stop trying to do all of this, that, this. Right, and shut that's, up and dribble. Yep. Man. Right. Yep. And I was like that for a little bit, really, until my last injury. And then it just showed me, like, oh, man, I can do this if I want. I can do this if I want. If I put my mind to this, like, I can literally do anything. anything. Mm. That's right. Regardless that's right. of what it is. Yes. Basketball was just what I chose to do and yes. chose to put my all into. That's yes. it. But it doesn't matter if even if I want to be a lawyer, if I decide to put That's my all into about, that, I bro. can be that too. You know what I mean? That's so. right. What yeah. are some of the things that you are doing? Because I've come to know you a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think you do some art, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What what other things do you do outside of just um, speaking to young athletes? Well, photography is that's that's something that I picked up while playing basketball too. Interesting. Uh, and that's something that I enjoy doing. I love doing. Um, and I've sold a couple. Uh, Couple of my uh, printouts prints? already. Okay. Yeah, what? Um, I've done photo shoots. Um, I mean, I've taken pictures for the big three. Like I, wow. I yeah, and it's just because I'm doing so many other things, I haven't totally put all my energy right. and focus Understood. into that. Understood. Right. But I know if I was to do that, like I know I would take off like this. The minute that I said I wanted to do it, I created a, a Instagram, mm. and I think it took me like three days. I had like 300 some followers. That's incredible, especially for something that no one knows you yeah. for That's or mm-hmm. as. Yep. That's incredible, man. The reason why I asked that too is because I know that someone listening and watching mm-hmm. may not understand, and this is what I want them to pick up. Yeah. You have right in front of you opportunities that you may not be seeing. In fact, Mm -hmm. we did an episode about opportunity blind spots. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the perspective Mm -hmm. and it takes a hard shift or something. And I hate that it sometimes has to be detrimental, Mm -hmm. but a lot of times that's the only way that we can be shaken up enough to pay attention to everything we've already been given. And I love that you aren't afraid to say, I'm starting from the bottom. Mm -hmm. You never want to like, yo, I wanted to be to the level it was when I was at the Mm -hmm. pinnacle of my career. This is now, this is me finding me. Mm -hmm. This is me giving from who I am. I'm becoming a well of wisdom and Mm -hmm. I'm offering that to the world. And this is what people will see. And I know that they can see even more because I'm choosing to make sure that they see it. That is incredibly inspirational because our whole show is dedicated to making sure people know they can set higher aspirations. That's why our show is called Aspire Higher, Mm -hmm. because there's more for you than just what you've done in the past or what, like you said, the box people put you in. So I want to say that by honoring you and also saying that for anyone listening and watching so they can say, yeah, there is more I can do. And I don't have to limit myself to this, Mm -hmm. even if it's my dream. Mm -hmm. Dream bigger. Dream more. Yes, sir. And I'm proud of you for doing that, man. I appreciate that. Very man. proud of you. Absolutely. It, it's interesting because for all the athletes I know that have been through injury, been through setback, or it, it's difficult to understand that we're bigger than that one area. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And I love that I've found, I should say, when you are outside of the thing that you have committed your whole life to. Yeah. There is a well of creativity that happens. Mm. When I retired, 
it was like, I didn't know that the gifts that were stirred in me as a child were the things that would put me in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those gifts were always there. Yeah. Our focus was just on track and field. Yeah. So it just, it's, it's interesting because you have to understand that we are complex beings. There's so yeah, many complexities sure. within the human sure. being that it is, you can marvel at, I should say. Mm -hmm. And when you find the moment or the strength mm -hmm of being able to take yourself out of the picture and just say, okay, I know I was created to do more. Mm. What does that more look like? Mm. What does that more represent? And what is that more, who is that more going to touch mm. and leave a legacy with? You know, that, I think if we were able to be creative like that in high school, middle school, mm -hmm. that would help a yeah, lot sure. oh, yeah. in the professional rank, right? Mm -hmm. And it would also help us not to be so close-minded or even yeah. be so devastated yeah. when it's taken away. That's very true. And all of us in our entire life actually has an expiration date on it. That's mm -hmm. right. And That's so right. we but we always like to live as though it's it's not, it's forever. Yeah, no. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this yeah. won't happen to me. So when I when I say that, I want to ask you a question. Now that you look back, you're past all the injuries, you're giving of yourself to other people. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest lessons you learned? Mm -hmm. Some of the biggest lessons I learned. Give us some of that wisdom now. Well, I mean, it might sound cliche, but it always goes back to God. Okay. Like, that's, that's not literally... cliche. That's what yeah. you really oh. believe. Yeah. Like me, I just, even, even when I met you, like I look at all that as like, mm -hmm. it's not a coincidence. No. Like I look at it as, as this is something that, that God, put together right. and I'm just going to go with it. And that's literally how I am with everything in my life. If it feels good, I go with it. If it mm -hmm. doesn't, I don't. And and even like coming in here, what I did before I got out of my car is I prayed that whatever I'm supposed to say, you put in, you speak that's through it. me, that's God. Right. Like I'm not, I don't even want to speak. Right. Whatever I'm mm -hmm. supposed to say, uh, let it be said and you just speak through me. And that's literally how I want to live my life. Like I literally just want to go where I'm led uh, and just, you know, just lead, speak from the heart. You know, and things like that. So Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. No, I appreciate that very much. Well, then let me ask you another question, follow-up question. Leadership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basketball, we know yeah. that you learn all kinds of things, and truthfully, you're leading generations behind you. Mm -hmm. right. So what are some of the greatest leadership lessons you've learned? Really just leading by example. Okay. Like, that's really what I try to do. Like, because even when I was hooping, so the last years that I was hooping, I was playing in the D-League. And in the D-League, I'm 30, 31. But there's a lot of 22, 24-year-olds. Oh, sure. of course. So I can talk to them all day about doing this, but they're going to pay attention to what I'm doing. Yeah, that's right. So that's I didn't even right. really I didn't even really talk to them too much. I just showed them. That's it, action. Yeah, yep. just, I just did what I was mm -hmm. supposed to do, always trying to be on time, just really just try to do my part. That's right. And the ones who are meant to get it are going to get it, and then the mm -hmm. ones who don't, they not. They so, can't. Mm -hmm. I love it. Lead by example. Of course. Mm -hmm. Lead by example. What was the greatest leader in your life that – you felt I want to become a follower of that because their life or their coach, whatever it is, they made you aspire higher. They made you think better. There's really only, I feel like, one person who has ever really done that. Okay. Um, because as a kid, I took from everybody. Okay. Like, I didn't have any role models. Like, right. uh, I liked the way my aunt did this, so I okay. did that. I liked uh, the way my mom did this, so I did that. Of, people. of everyone, yep. But the first time I remember feeling like that was uh, I went to, I have a friend who, has some condos in uh, St. Martin. Okay. And I went to St. Martin and I met a guy who, they called him Rasta, but he literally lived off the land. He wow. made his own house, he grows his own food, everything that he was wearing was all wow. him. Like, And that was the first time I was like, man, like, I can imagine his relationship with God just yeah, because, because he's pure, living right? the way God right. is saying we're right. supposed to be living, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was one person who I was like, yeah, I would definitely want to strive to whatever whatever got him to where he is right now. Like, I, I would love to do that. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. what, the most what, humble person. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. What Not was it Not the one with drew? the glitz, the that's glamour. Right. Oh, yeah. The cars. It wasn't yeah. that. Oh, yeah, no. Nah, very nah. interesting. It's but, very interesting. Would you say that, I have to ask this, having seen it, because you've been to the pinnacle. You played yeah. in the NBA for years. It's yeah. not like you just were there. Right. And then you come away from that. Mm -hmm. You get to see the stark contrast. Right. Oh, yeah. And it's interesting as an NBA athlete, because you're not the first that I've heard to say this, especially in the NBA. But you're like, that stuff, that yeah. ain't even what I want anymore. I don't yeah. even need it. What like? Talk about that contrast and, and, and how is that possible? Because right. so many people, their aspirations are to get those of things. Mm -hmm. of course. You're like, I just want to leave those things. Yeah. Mm. Well, I didn't come from that. Like, I mm. came from, from humble beginnings anyways. And then once I got there, you start to see, like, 
yeah, you might have this, you might have that, but your soul is dirty. You know what I mean? The way the way you're talking to people, the way you're treating people, mm-hmm. like, like, and I always had a connection with God, so yeah. I can easily see God in a person, and when oh, someone nice. is flacking God in the person, you know what I mean? Woo. And that's just something that I was never really drawn to. Don't get me wrong, I've had yeah. some of these things, but not even for those same reasons. Like even yes. my 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 um, I had an Audi A7, mm-hmm. but I never got that car for showing off right, or because right, of this right. that. Yeah. Yeah. I got that car because when I was growing up, nice cars. That was we used to say that's that's, that's for white people. Oh. No, we used to say that's for white. We used to think it was for white people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like literally, wow. that that's literally that's our right. mindset. Wow. You know, we didn't know anybody like growing up. I think I might have known one black guy who grew up with his mom and dad. Mm. You know what I mean? So a lot of these things were like we just thought white people had it. Mm. So when I go to my hometown and they see me in an A7, yeah. and they know that I'm still doing the right things, I'm still. Mm. That means a lot to me, you know what I mean. And I don't, I don't. It's not like I love it either. Like everybody where I'm from, they sitting on it. You know, I might let my little cousin take it for you know what I mean. Like because that's just, that's just what it is. And that's that was my reason for having it. It Was Uh never to show off. It was really to inspire, to motivate. You know what I mean. We yeah, we can have this too. You don't have to be a drug dealer or this or that to have to live like this. No, you can still do the right things and still you know, have the nice car that you want. And this is something that I prayed for. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, and, and it's it's so crazy because I was telling the story the other day, like God knows me. So when it came time for me to get this car, he knows that that, that doubt might come up and we're supposed to have this. Yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, car worthy of it, yeah. So I'm in the uh, the Audi dealership and me and the guy who I'm getting the car from, he, we just start having this deep conversation about God. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, man, like, he goes, I'm not, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. I was I was struggling coming in today. Me and my wife were going through it, and you know I was just I was really struggling. But he was like, this conversation was God speaking to me mm. through you, and I really appreciate that. So uh-huh. right then and there, oh, I'm supposed to have this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. I'm, a, said, oh, I'm yeah. exactly where I'm Driving supposed away to be. With something here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. So I I, I got happy, and I, yeah. there was the doubt never came in my mind again. That's from true. and I had the car for like six years, wow. but it wow. never came in my in my mind again because. That day would always come up. Like God had me there for a reason. I'm supposed to have this car. I love That's that, it. Man. Mm-hmm. Incredible. He just flows with you, huh? Yeah, man. Really, and he easy flows with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He makes a choice to flow. Yeah, he makes a choice. But see, that's flow. the thing. Is uh, I wouldn't even say it's a choice. Like mm-hmm. my life has made me this way. Like okay. I've gone through okay. so much and I've experienced God so much that I know God is real. Like nobody can tell me anything different because I have too many experiences of God. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that's why I speak the way I do. That's why right. I talk about him the way I do because you might not have had these experiences, mm-hmm. but you can get these experiences through me. Mm-hmm. And that's why I talk to the kids the way I do. I tell them these stories. I even I told the story that I was telling you about Israel in a prison. Yo, please Israel? talk about that. What yes, is, what yes, about yes, it? yes. Tell us oh, about that, please. Okay, so it was my uh, it was my first time uh, out of the NBA. Okay. So I was really struggling. Um, not knowing if I'll be back in the league. Right. Uh, I was in a relationship at the time. We were really going through it. Mm. Um, so I'm in Spain and team like 0 and 6. Just, everything's just bad. So I get a call from my mm. agent saying, uh, you know, I got something from me in Israel. Okay. I'm real big in the Bible at the time, you know, so I'm thinking, okay, Israel. Israel. That's, 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 yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, where my, like, my blessing is. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> so I get to Israel and literally on the day I get to Israel, it's cold. This has been in 24 years. It was on the papers, or in the papers, on the news. Wow. And me, I hate cold weather. I'm from Florida, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. So I was even talking to the coach before. He's like, oh, you love it here. It's like Miami here. Yeah. Oh, so I'm no. like, okay, so I get there, it's freezing. But <laughs> I took that. As a, it was just the devil trying to distract me because my blessing is here. That's yeah. literally how I took it. Okay. So then I get to my uh, apartment that it gave me the car. I just trash. Like it's just, it's just something that I don't even feel comfortable living in. Wow. So a couple of days go by and I just see that things just went from bad in Spain to worse in Israel. So I got the realest that I've ever gotten with God. I was like, look, I'm not leaving this room until you speak to me. I can't take it from a preacher anymore, a sermon. Mm-hmm. Like I have to hear you, you have to, cause, cause yeah. my life is going down. And yeah. if I'm going to continue to believe in you, you have to talk to me. Mm-hmm. So I sat in my room for five hours, just a flashlight in the Bible, no food, no water. I'm just opening it up, just putting my hand down. And everything that I was landing on was talking about doing more for others than you do for yourself. Come on, bro. Like that's now literally everything that, that kept coming up. Wow. So I ended up getting up, uh, going to my teammate's apartment. Now I know where he's like, man, I got eight brothers and sisters. Team hasn't paid me in two months. Like, like I don't know what to do. My mom, she has another baby on the way. She thinks I'm over here just wilding. Yeah. So doing more for others than you do for yourself is what I've been reading all day. Um, when I got to Israel, I signed a $2,500 signing bonus. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to give this to him. Mm-hmm. And then he started talking about like Gucci, Louis. He was like, that's rich people stuff. I've never had that. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking on my way to his apartment, like I'm literally kicking this stuff out of the way just to get through the door. 
So I went back to my room. I took my three Gucci belts, my three Gucci shoes, my Prada shades, along with the $2,500 I put in the bag and I took it to him. Here, bro. He goes, oh man, thank you, thank you. I'm like, bro, don't thank me because I'm not doing this for you. Wow. I was like, my life is going down and I believe that this is what God wants me to do. So I'm doing this to show God I'm all in. Oof. Let's so, go. <laughs> so I hand him the bag and I go back to my room. Literally, the minute I step in my room, my phone vibrates. I look at my phone. My agent says, pack your bags. I just got a deal in China worth more than you'd have made in Israel and Spain Stop put together. It. And instead of being overseas for another five months, which I hated, I get to go home in three weeks. Incredible. So for me, that was like. Absolutely. You, you hear <laughs> somebody, somebody's yeah. here, you know what I mean? So yes. from that day on, I even dropped to my knees and I told God, look, I don't want to live for myself anymore. Come on. Whatever wow. you want me to do, just put it in my heart and I promise you I'll do it. Like whatever it is, I don't care what it is, just make it known to me and I'm doing it. And wow. I've been trying to live my life that way ever since. Don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, but yeah, that's no that's doubt. what I strive for. Right. That, I know right. It. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the story you're telling me about. Mm -hmm. That that's is incredible. About. First of all, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. That's your testimony. Absolutely. That's authentic. Yes. I love that. Yeah. And the fact that sacrifice and servitude were two of the same things that God used to elevate yeah, you. Yeah, led him to success again. Elevate you. Mm -hmm. In the worst time of his life. Ever. And I just have to say that we've got to encourage you because sometimes that's our struggle. We want something so bad and we want so much, so badly, but we're not sacrificing or giving to others mm -hmm. who don't have what we already have. We're yeah. consciously and constantly trying to get high right. as opposed to bringing others up. If you would just consider that maybe someone around you right now, you might be the thing that they're waiting on to bless their life. And it might be the thing God's waiting on for you to do so he can bless yours. Wow. You might be the answer and you might also have the answer. Mm. I'm just telling you that because this is also at the precipice. This is, this is everything we try to communicate when it comes to aspiring higher. Yeah. Even when you do find the, li the life you want, you find the light and you get to the highest level or platform. That's not for you. Mm. It's always meant for you to bring others with you, That's to right. lift others with you, to show other people that it's possible. And I love how he said it. It's not only possible, but you can do it right. Mm -hmm. You can do it with the right heart, with right. the right mind, with right. the right attitude, right. with the right spirit. You can do it with God. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the things that I talk about in one of my keynote speeches when I talk about deliberately creating massive amounts of momentum. You can fly, but you need God's help. Yeah. That's literally the exponential multiplier. And I'm just telling you, if you hadn't taken anything from today, I understand that all of our shows are different. Every show has different things, but you know that that is the core of what we want you to gather and grasp from today. And I hope, if anything, you were challenged and humbled by someone who's been to the highest high, because I know I am. As I listen to him, he doesn't speak highly of it. Yeah. That, not one he time. references the lowest points as yeah. if they're the highest things in his life. Come on. Hmm. And I think that all of us, every single person listening and watching, should be able to take that message to heart. Yeah. Because it's the things that you're the most frustrated about, the things that you're hurting the most about, that you should be happiest about. Mm. Because maybe that's the thing, as he said, that's developing you into everything you wanted and more. Jeez. Thank great. you for that, bro. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I let everyone know no, I was man, listening. Thank you. I appreciate Come that. On. Yep. That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Anything else, love? Man, I think you done stole it. Man, I, <laughs> no, I think I was, I was, it was <laughs> No, it's a ahead? great conversation. And I, it's just learning someone's life yes. authentically makes me so happy. Yes. And that he's real enough to be like, this is what I went through, but here I am. Mm -hmm. And also, too, this is how you get higher by going lower. Mm, we like talk about that. that. Mm -hmm. That's real. You know how many people in the NBA? Forget an NBA. Athletics, yeah, right, life. period. In life, yeah. in business, well, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. They're not real enough to be in the seat like yeah. that. They're not. Yeah. But taking accountability like you do mm -hmm. is excellent. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You can feel in the room Absolutely. the humility. Absolutely. You can feel the area of being a base that he's been through, but his miraculous story in life yeah. is something that he's been holding dear to him, but doesn't 
break him. It doesn't, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, it's just, you can just feel yeah. that weight, but also that humility that's so beautiful yeah. within here. So yeah. I'm grateful that you're yeah, here. Man. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Absolutely. You Absolutely, man. Well, thank <laughs> Where you so can much. people find you? Where do you want them to find you? Uh, I mean, you can go to my Instagram, God okay. I am underscore JT. All right. Uh, I really don't have social media. I, right. I really don't be on social media like okay. that, I'll say. That's okay. But uh, it's definitely something that I know in the future I'm definitely going to have to you be. You have to, just man. Yes, of doing. course. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So part kids, of you yeah. telling that narrative you want other people to, to yeah. see now. Yep. Yep. That's yeah, because these kids, they... Soon as I speak, like Wait. I literally, I go on Instagram. It's <laughs> yeah. like six <laughs> new followers. You know what I mean? So I yes. probably should start posting more, and that's that's my plan. Um, yeah. so I I met a guy not too long ago who uh, a couple of days ago who uh, has a ice cream truck, mm -hmm. and I told him what I was doing, and he was like, uh, "Man, I would love to come out and bring the ice cream truck to the kids." Oh. And right when he said that, this school that I visit all the time out in Bithlow, um, I have a good friend of mine named Tim. He it's uh, United Global Outreach or something like I think that's what it's called. Okay. But there's a school over in Bithlow where um, a lot of the kids, like their parents were like drug addicts, right. former drug addicts. So he built like a whole community over there. And I've probably gone there like nine times. And these kids, like they love when I pull sure. up. So I'm going to take that ice cream truck over there. But I say all that because I, like, I usually don't do this. Cause I've done things like this a lot. Understood. But I think maybe now I'll get like a camera, yeah. somebody come Absolutely. record it just Absolutely. so I can't post it. You know what I mean? I, I never, it's just never been on me to do that when I yeah. do these type of things. But right. I see now, especially in the world that we're living in today, yeah, absolutely. Like, it's necessary. Creating it a platform. so necessary. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you're doing that. Again, it's not letting your right hand know what your left hand is doing, mm -hmm. but it also inspires people that they can use yep. their hands. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Okay? Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. I like that. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, all he does is serve people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Serve children. Which means he's going to be elevated very shortly. He, this relationship's going to continue elevated. to grow. But watch, you mm -hmm. you, you mark my Here words. Mm -hmm. Five years from now, 10 years from now, yes. this man's going to be standing on a platform that reminds him of what he felt like when he was in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And he's going to have all those people, again, all those connections that you may have thought forgot about you or that you forgot about. And they're going to be like, mm -hmm. yo, bro, I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And they're going to start putting money into it. And before you know it, you're going to be having the 501c3. And all of a sudden, you're going to be the face and name of a brand, mm -hmm. even though you never wanted to be which is why God's going to put you out in front. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be doing things and helping other people use you as the path to the platform that's going to elevate other people so they can have one too. Yep. I'm telling you, man, it's going to be quick. Yeah, you watch. I, I never had that dream, but it definitely sounds like something I want now. So. <laughs> you got to dream yeah, it. You're already it. doing it. That sounds mm -hmm. like a prophecy to yes, me. Sir. All yes, right, sir. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say yeah. to athletes, students, parents, coach, anything? Uh, pretty much the same thing I've said, man. Whatever you want to be, you can be it. You know what I mean? Just put your all into it. Definitely put God first and just, you know, keep the, keep the fight going. That's so, it. My brother. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was a very special conversation for us. We're really grateful to have had it. Changed the dynamic of the show quite drastically, which we're grateful for. And we hope that it changed the dynamic of your life having listened to it. So as we always say, hit that like, hit that share button because somebody need to hear it. Yep. But definitely hit that subscribe. It's your vote of confidence for us and what we do because we're trying our best to use our platforms to inspire you. Again, you know where to find us. You know where to follow us. But until next episode, we'll see you next time.